The hippo there eating some ice, trying to beat the heat, as it are a lot of people and our pets and furry friends and non-furry friends like Timothy here. I do want to bring in, though, the director of mammals. This is Rachel Malstaff from the San Antonio Zoo. How do you guys at the zoo, how do the animals stay safe when we're talking temperatures in the triple digits? Oh yeah, and we've had some pretty hot temperatures this summer already. It's been almost over 100 almost every day in July. Um, we've got a lot of different things we can do to keep the animals comfortable. You know, like you saw the, the ice blocks with Timothy. I mean, they just, it cools them off, but they also love playing with them. A lot of times for the ice blocks, we'll actually put some of their diet in there. We'll put some treats in there, um, whether it be produce, fruit, vegetables, greens, chow. Um, and they enjoy, you know, it cools them off as they eat it. And depending on the animal, a lot of different things, whether it's the ice treats, whether it's wallows, bass, um, we've got, you know, air conditioned fans in their houses. Um, so there's a lot of different things we do in bath, you know, or having, even having to drink from the hose. So we have a lot, a lot of different options and fun ways to keep the animals here cool. Are, now, are there animals that are more accustomed to it than others? And do you see their activity change sometimes in the summertime? Sometimes we do. I mean, just kind of, you know, like us too, you know, when it's 102 degrees, we're less likely to be out there running around and interacting and playing with stuff. Um, so a lot of times you'll see the animals are, I would say, not moving around quite as much or, you know, they're relaxing, they're relaxing in the shade, they're relaxing in, you know, in the fan, um, fan areas, cooler areas. Is it common for animals to maybe retreat sometimes in the shade? Like you said, we always want to cool ourselves off. Do they naturally have that instinct to do so as well? They do. They, they know kind of where they can go to, to cool off. Um, you know, a lot of the, the um, indoor areas are air conditioned. They've got fans. Um, so most of them have access to the to those areas when, you know, we have the, the heat like we have now. Which it, it's funny to say that because you think, oh, it's so hot for everyone going to the zoo. This time of year, do you notice a change in the amount of people or because it's summertime and the kids are out of school, are there a lot more people at the zoo, even though it's sweltering? Yeah, generally the summer is kind of our busiest season. Um, you know, so we were doing different things to kind of help guests with the heat. We've got cooling stations set up and we've got some misters in our new Neotropica area. So guests can actually walk through the misters and it cools out that area quite a bit. If animals do become overheated, are what are some of the things you guys do to, to bring them back in and get them back to a healthy temperature? Yeah, so we're rarely we do have, you know, we don't have issues very often, but if we do notice, you know, with the animal care specialists are working with the animal, they may see some signs of heat stress, then we'll let the vet team, um, we'll notify the vet team right away. Um, and usually it's a lot of times it's, it's just monitoring the animal. We can just make sure we give them extra ice blocks, you know, have them in the air, air conditioned um, houses. Um, but it's something that we, we would let the vet staff know right away if there's an issue. All right. Well, thank you so much again. This is the director of mammals, Rachel Mostaff from the San Antonio Jew Zoo. And we respect you for being here. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.